I've always, uh, when I was younger, always thought, what is it like to be old and on pension? And uh, so when I saw pensioners, I said, it doesn't look very good because a lot of pensioners just sit in pension. I don't know what the pension means, but they don't do anything. So uh, I thought, I don't want to be like that. There is no pension for us. So rightly or wrongly, we are in it, and God's still with us, and we trust God will, will, uh, will still use us for years to come. The, the, uh, the only difference is between perhaps us and... I see a couple, couple other gray folks around here. That's nice. <laughs> but they, they're getting on. Yeah, the only, the only difference be, is that uh, we can look back at the years and we, we can see if you're short-sighted, you know, you can still see there's only a short time to go uh, while you're on this earth. So spend your time well getting to this age. And uh, because there is so much to do, the preparation that was done there helps us to go forward where we are now. No preparation, then we can sit at home and just watch TV. And I don't think that's, that's really what God would want of us. And uh, we also see that in the, in, if we look at the scriptures, we see how God used young people. Uh, you know, the Davids and the Josephs and the, and the Joshuas and whoever. There's so many just young people that God used mightily. But then we look at as those younger people get older, like Moses and, and Abraham, God used old people as well, hugely. And so just know that there is always a job for you in his kingdom. Uh, the world might tell you otherwise, but in God's kingdom, there's always a work. So uh, for, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Bill and I have been, we always say this because it's, We'd say it proudly as well. We've been married for 56 years, and uh, we are. When when Beryl's grandmother was married for 60 years, we thought 60 years is that a possibility for any one of us? And we're only four years away from that. So, so maybe the Lord will spare us for then. And uh, yeah, I was. Uh, we were pastors before this. Uh, before we joined LL Ministries um, in Pretoria. We were there for 12 years, but God led us to, uh, to what's on our heart, and that was to really just to, to help people in their, in their walk in life and to, and to minister to them. And uh, so, uh, you know, to, to do a, a preach every, every week, that's a bit of a stretch for me. So, so LL Ministries was just nice because the difference between our ministries and, and the church is in the church they preach a different message to the same people. At LL we preach the same message to different people. <laughs> so so that's, that's actually quite nice. And uh, so you, that message comes into your heart. And sometimes we have to do a preach. So we go for it. And uh, we've got uh, two children, five grandchildren, and one and a half great grandies and uh, so we are really getting into that league and, uh, and we, are, we see, we look at photographs and uh, Bill's got her photographs already wherever she's got people that she meets, she, the photographs are out there and she's bragging <clears throat> but anyway it's good to be here, can we pray Father I just want to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we can just bring your word and that your word will will come into our hearts, Lord, that we will be encouraged by your word. <clears throat> Father, that you will, by your great anointing, just speak deep into those areas of our lives that we, we just need you, Lord. Let's just spend a second or so just connecting with the Lord. Lord, we want, to, we want to connect with you, Lord. Lord, we don't want to... We don't want to listen to the word 
as if it is for somebody else. Lord, we want to listen to the word for ourselves. Speak into our hearts, Lord. Give us direction. Bring correction. Help us to grow in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I, I was, it was quite interesting to hear that, that you are doing a series on growth in the church. And so the, what I prepared actually for today is also about growth. So, you know, when the Lord speaks, I suppose he speaks in different ways, but he can, he can really actually speak the same theme uh, without you us really know it. And that's really exciting to me. Um, let's see, get my notes in the slide over here. One of the scriptures that has been inspiring me over the last couple of years as, as, we, as we are getting older um, is to do with, uh, with God's promise and expanding and growing. Expanding, I'm not talking about this expanding. <laughs> it's quite easy. But, but growing in God, this is what I believe that the Lord wants us all to do. And for God's promise that he's given us over the years and given you personally and as a church, that, that also grows within us so that we can grow with God. And when I say grow within us, it's got to, that, those promises are going to, we're going to make our own. And, um, and with that, the influence that God can use because of what he's doing in our, in our hearts is, uh, is quite huge, really. And so we want, to, we want to be a blessing in the kingdom of God. We want to be a blessing in, the, in his church. And listen, this is his church. And, uh, and in spite of stuff in our own lives and in the world, uh, we will still want to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. And so following God wholeheartedly, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, is, is, is with all your heart, with everything in you and within me is to follow him, knowing he is with me because he's in me and he's in you and he's within us as a collective body. And also understanding that when God gives a promise, uh, he will see it through. But obviously, we have to allow that to happen. And we're going to be looking at some of these things that, you know, how does that really happen? So we also have to look at, at what we will call giants in our own lives. We all got a, a giant here. Some have got big giants, some have got little giants, but we've got giants. And we, we are afraid of those, those giants that are within our lives. And it's, um, it's much easier to acknowledge the giants in somebody else's life <laughs> than it is to acknowledge the giants in our own lives. Amen to that. So I would like to read a, a scripture about these, these giants and the promise. And uh, this is the scripture that, that the Lord's been speaking to me over the last uh, while. It's about Joshua and Caleb. And remember they were the, the spies that went into the to spy out the the, the, the country and uh, they were, there were ten of them and they went out and they saw amazing stuff. They brought fruit back which they had to carry on sort of a poles and the fruit hanging from these poles. So huge stuff, huge people, tall people, tough people. And, uh, and eight of them came back and they gave a bad report and the people's hearts started to melt about this country that they were looking to, to, to enter. But Joshua and Caleb came back with good report. Yes, there are giants, but our God, through God, with God, we can, over, we can overcome. And so it's the way that we look at these obstacles in front of us. We can look at an obstacle and say, oh, my God. Or we can say, with God, I can go right through this obstacle. So this is um, 
this is uh, Caleb now. Uh, Moses is no longer there, so so uh, Joshua is now he, he's, he's in charge, and uh, Caleb, a great friend of his, they went in to the into the uh, promised land, and forty years, forty years later, that's what Caleb says. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh. Uh, Barnea to explore the land. What was exciting for me personally is I was 40 when I got saved. So, uh, and then a little bit further down he says, I know, uh, I, however, followed the Lord Almighty because they gave this, these wrong uh, um, report backs. I followed the Lord wholeheartedly. So on the day that Moses swore to me, the land on which you have, your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since. So he's now 85. I'm not there yet. (laughs) Forty, um, uh, let me just do that again. So here I am, 85 years on, and I'm still strong, as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard that the Anakites uh, were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. And Joshua blessed Caleb and he gave him Hebron. That's a lesson for all of us, actually. You know, Why did Caleb wait 45 years? I don't know. I I had to think hard about that. And and I've come sort of come to the conclusion that I don't think Caleb in himself was ready before then. I mean, when you're 40 years, you're in the prime of life, you will say, yes, let's go for it, irrespective. But I wonder what Caleb actually had to work through in himself to say, I I want to get to that place where I am now ready to get into this hill country and the giants. What do I have to fix up in my own heart? Who do I still have to forgive? Who do I still have to make right with? What is my attitude like? We, We I, I came back with these good reports and Moses blessed me. How much pride have I got because I was a spy of good, of good repute. I was following the Lord wholeheartedly. What about you? No, you don't. Look at me. I follow the Lord wholeheartedly. You know, we can follow the Lord wholeheartedly and be so full of pride we can't see straight. Maybe he had to face his own giants before he could go into the, into, the, into the world and say, I'm ready to take you on. So we all have what, I, what we would call growing pains. I can remember my, when I was a little lighty, I was often have pains in the legs and my folks used to tell me, oh, it's just growing pains. And they'll give me a discipline or something like that just to try and is the pain or the tension and, uh, and, and it helps but actually we all go through grain pains throughout our lives and those grain pains we, we need to look at how can we get past that because we have to get past a place that this is no longer an issue I'm growing in this area but now I have victory over that what was in, in my life 
And I would like to tell you a story about the life of a, of a lobster. I don't think you have lobsters. You have more crayfish, but I suppose they're very similar, but lobsters are a little bit bigger or whatever. I'm not quite sure. But let's learn from the process that a lobster has to go through to grow. The life, of, life cycle of a lobster uh, actually is quite incredible. And, um, and it has a, the lobster has a, it's like a crayfish type thing, so it has a soft, meaty inside, and then it has this hard shell to protect, to protect itself on, on the outside. And, uh, and as the lobster grows from the inside, it gets to a place where this hard shell, which does not grow, uh, has to give way. And so it comes to a point in his life where the, the shell is shed so that the, the meaty part can grow and the shell, another shell grows to protect the, 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 the meaty part. Now, uh, because, because it doesn't have a shell in those vulnerable periods of its growth, the lobster hides in the crevice of the rocks, and uh, because if it comes out of there, the predators will, will, will go for it. And so, how does it eat? Apparently, apparently, other lobsters come and feed it. And you know, this process of it going through, uh, going through shedding sh uh, this hard shell or, and growing more and another hard shell, it happens about 25 times on average over about a seven-year period. 25 times. And it has to work through this, this thing and go and hide itself and trust in others to come alongside and sustain it and help us grow. So, for a lobster to survive, it has to go through these vulnerable periods of time. And I wonder, you know, I'm just thinking of this, you know, how many hard shells have we got <laughs> that we have to shed over our period of going through our youth, going through puberty, getting into adulthood, getting into the world, finding, my goodness, there's so many challenges out here in, in, in this world that... Um, that's actually quite difficult. And the main factor and incentive to grow is the sense of uncomfortableness within a tight shell. And so it has to, it has to do something. And God has obviously created that, that it can shed its shell so that it can grow. You know, One of the testimonies I have when as, uh, growing up uh, and I went to LL Ministries and we wanted to start LL Ministries here in Africa is the fact that I was saved at 40 but there were some parts of my life that were never dealt with in the whole discipleship program. So the, there were things in my life that, that always hampered me. And... Um, and when, when we got to LL Ministries and we were sitting under these teachings, I just felt the Lord saying to me, and I went to Beryl and I told her this, is, the Lord said that um, I want you to go back to Africa, to South Africa, and establish LL Ministries. And he said this, but I cannot use you as you are. Hmm. What a word. I knew exactly what he was talking about. It so happened that we was able to deal with, it, with these things, uh, and we, and and uh, and Bill and I just went through a huge dip, and we dealt with the stuff. But as we shed all these shells <laughs> that we didn't deal with over that the period of 50 plus years, God started to grow us. We went through this very vulnerable stage. 
and then God started to grow us. I, I, I used to I used to address it as a, as like a taking a, a onion and just taking the one layer after another off this onion, and then after a while you started putting the la- different layers back again. But it was a very vulnerable time. And you know what? We we are afraid of vulnerable times. And God wants to say, I I cannot use you until you go through this vulnerable time so you can become stronger. And this is the way that we grow and become mature in Christ. I need I didn't I needed to make decisions. I needed to say, Yes, Lord, I am I am willing. And I say, I can remember saying to the Lord, you can do anything you want, but just don't take your Holy Spirit from me. And that's what exactly what he, what he did. You see, if I want to enlarge my territory and have a bigger influence, I've got to work through the stuff where the enemy pulled me into and I did wrong stuff. And, and, but those are things we've got to deal with. And God gives us the opportunity here on earth to deal with these things. So we had to ask ourselves, are we ready for the, for the giants? Are we ready now for the giants? At the age of 81, we've worked through stuff over the last years, and we're saying, yes, we are now in this waiting period. Lord, what do you want to do with us? We've now stepped down, we've handed over the ministry at LL to others last year, April, and now we're in this sort of this waiting period. God, what have you got for us? And you know what? We're finding one or two more giants. <laughs> Are we ready to fight the giants in our lives? We have to say, yes, I, I want to be, I need to fight the giants because I still want to grow even at this age. Because I know we've still got something to give. I know it. And I'm not saying that proud, proudfully. I just know God says, I want to use you. And then soon we say, well, Lord, when? And he's quiet. How long must I wait, Lord? And he's quiet. So if he doesn't say anything, you just do what you've been doing. And we're doing what we're doing until he says something else. You see, the lessons of life are... Uh, aren't learned by changing jobs or churches or changing families or whatever you want to do. Your lessons in life are learned by sticking through and pushing through the stuff. Getting rid of that hard shell we have to push through. The butterfly has to push through. The, The chicken and the egg has to push through. But we don't like pushing through anymore. We just disappear. Get out of it. Go there. Shame. It's, it's that learning of, of getting into life that will help us to be strong. For not only for ourselves, but for others. Because every one of us here has a role to play in other people's lives. Especially when you become a Christian. We sang those songs out there about, about the world needs to know. I'm not afraid of the gospel. Speak it out, but we... I don't want to be rejected, so I'm still suffering with rejection if I don't want to talk about the gospel. That's a giant in, in our lives. And so, you know, in my <clears throat> own life, I, I grew up with a sense of rejection and failure. That's part of my, my destiny. Uh, my school career really suffered because somehow I was always in trouble, just doing the wrong thing. Uh, I never felt good enough. I never felt confident enough to do th- new things. And I see my peers doing new stuff. And I thought, I can't do that. So I limited myself. 
from doing the stuff that I see them doing. So I matured much slower than they do because I had these blockages in front of me. I had these shells, these hard shells that I had to, had to get, get rid of. I developed a fear of authority, of teachers, particularly. And, so, and, it, and they didn't know how to handle me, and they gave me hidings. Those days you could still get caned. So I, <laughs> I had plenty of canings. And I, I wasn't alone in it, but there were others as well. But, but that was my lot. So how that affected me is that I, became, I, became, I began to stutter. Couldn't I put two words behind each other. And so, in reading in the class, I can see the, the, the one teacher was a, uh, we had cadets in the, those days, and he was the cadet instructor, and he took a drumstick, and he had a drawer full of them, and I opened the drawer, and hear the, the drumsticks, and crack, as he opened the drawer, and he took one out, and he walked around, and I, when it was my turn to speak, he was already behind me. And I had to say this little paragraph. And I, if a word started with an S or an M, oh my goodness, I, I couldn't get these things out. <laughs> and I could feel on the sock line here how he would cane with a drumstick. So that didn't help me in, because my ability to, to please was just not there. And I couldn't stand it when somebody came and said, well done, yeah, that was good. I would think, what do you want out of me? You know, it was easier to be rejected than to, to receive praise. It is a, I, I restrained myself in just so many areas. Thank goodness I was good at sport. And so in the sports field, I would, I would do better than most, and, but, and I never started on the sports field. Put me in classroom. Did he stutter? Did he do this on the sports field? No, sir. You see, you are rebellious. So I became rebellious. And I built another shell to deal with. Uh, you know, it's, it's like I grew, I grew up like a, a tree that had been struck partially by lightning or past the tree was struck by lightning and one of the trees sort of half died and the other tree, a part of the tree flourished and I, and I, grew, I grew like this. This was good, but this part of me here uh, was not good. So I didn't want to live like that. I wanted, to, I wanted to grow. I wanted to know how. But there was nobody there I could speak to. There, there were no mentors in those days. And somebody who offered to come alongside and say, can, uh, can I help you? Uh, they did have therapy for me when I when, uh, doing school for my stuttering. They sent me to the staff room and they had a carpet under the table and m one or two of us went and lay under the table to rest. That was my therapy. Anyway, just let you know. But we all want to grow. We all want to grow because, you know, the scope we see in ourselves for moving out is limited to the way we see ourselves. And sometimes it takes somebody else to say, you know, you can do that. And when I married, married Beryl, I think she saw some of the stuff come through. And she said, but you can do this. No, I can't. I didn't do it before. I had a two-year job. I, I would leave after two years in case you fired me. I, would, I know, I can find another job. And she said, why are you doing that? So I said, no, I was bored. <laughs> I'm not growing there. If it wasn't for burial, I would have still been two years, two years, two years, two years in different jobs. Maybe I would have ended up in Swakabin. I would have loved that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. We just jump around, we just leave, not able to push through. 
And the girl said one day, just stick it on for a little bit longer. Oh, okay. Fifteen years later, I sort of, no. Same job. Fifteen years. Fifteen years, me. <laughs> I had a breakthrough. So, g- growing in life, generally, in your business career, in your, in your relationships, in our, in our, just every part of life, we, we, need, to, we need to grow. Uh, and even growing spiritually, now I don't, didn't know I, had to grow, I could grow spiritually until I became a Christian, but if we don't see spiritual growth in our spirit and spiritually, we're going to find ourselves in big trouble. And feelings of condemnation and things like that, shame, will come through. So, in a church setting, growing in our personal borders, it needs to happen. Growing in our personal borders needs to happen before our church borders can grow. Each one of us. We have to grow. A person with an outgoing personality or that charisma that we see some of the guys have, that helps a lot. But if we do not rely on the Holy Spirit, because these guys can sometimes rely on their own ability and soulishness to do almost anything until one day. Until one day. The Holy Spirit is the only option that we have as a Christian to be able to go forward and to grow in God so that we can handle whatever the world has to throw at, throw at us. If we have, we have that confidence of fake it till you make it stuff, it's, it, 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 it will work for a while. But later on in life you will say, yeah, I don't know how to fake it anymore. I've done so many lies now that uh, I believe my own lies. And Oh, my goodness. Deception sets in so quickly. Now, we all know that personal growth is not always easy. It's, you know, it's a bit difficult. It's a bit overpowering sometimes. But uh, if we want to get out of this boat that we are in, and we are confined to this boat. And is that, that's what Peter had to do. He was confined to fishing in a boat, or maybe from the shore, but in a boat, in this case. And the storm was around us. And he sees Jesus walking on the, on the water, and he, Jesus says, come. He says, Lord, if you say so, I can do it. He says, come. And he gets out the boat. And while he's got his eyes on Jesus, as we all know, But you look at the storm. Just let one little storm come close to you. Eyes off Jesus, down, gone. So, let us not sidestep God's plan for us. God says, I know the plans of you for you not to harm you. Not to harm you but give you life, good future. But we have to go through those vulnerable places. He will protect us in these things. He said, I've come to rescue you. I've come to set you free. I'm not going to harm you. But you need to get through these things so that you can grow and these things that we've, that we've held inside you for so many years needs to grow. If we have fear of growing, of dealing with stuff, it's another shell (laughs) we have to deal with. And we don't like sitting in places of fear. So what do we? What? How does? How does fear get you? We just keep quiet. We can't sit in the back there somewhere. And not there, but there. I'm not saying you've got fear, but please. But we, we, we will sort of sit, sit away from, from when I'm not, not noticed, that type of thing. Fear we need to deal with. It's not going to harm us while we're dealing with it. 
we have to deal with it. Because if we not, do not grow in our spiritual lives, we will not, <coughs> excuse me, we will not find the door to maturity. We have to open the door. We have to say, yes, I'm, I'm prepared to go that way. And God helps us to deal with it. Confessing stuff, repenting of stuff, forgive, forgiving others, being healed ourselves. These are all keys to our freedom of breaking out of that shell. Breaking out of the stuff that's holding us in. And these shells can get very hard just because of our own stubbornness and pride. So when we, God wants to deal with our, our character, uh, we, we generally become overcomers of these obstacles of fears and rejections, unworthiness, defensiveness, shame. You can, there's a thousand things you can mention. Very often, we just see too many obstacles in front of us that we don't want to deal with, this, with, with it. And so we give up on ourselves. We do not trust God to help us through because of a fear of rejection. Because confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. Is in James chapter 5. Allowing the, we allow the enemy of our souls to heap that con condemnation on us. Accusing us of having no backbone, trying to convince us that we are useless, that God has no time for us. And the devil's invitation to his dark world in that corner there somewhere becomes more inviting because it's easier to just to give in than to actually to come to God and say, yes, Lord, make a better person of me. So why then do we give up? Because we actually want to live life without fighting our personal giants. So we try and dissociate from, and dissociate means to separate ourselves away, out from our issues. And rather to deal with it, we find ways like anger and things to do with it, or manipulation to deal with the stuff. And we, we, we try and uh, shout at people or say ugly things to people just to keep them away from touching what actually needs to be growing inside. And so those who love us approach us and say, can I help you? No, get out of here. I don't need any help. So it's much easier to blame others. Look what he's doing to take, the, to take the focus of me. So we want to we want to point it out to anybody. He's not doing that. He's not doing that. Look what they're doing. Hey, look how they're living. Look how they. Oh my goodness. So we're not looking up. Oh, and judging. So it's easier to judge others than to judge ourselves. God God calls us to judge ourselves. Taking the the focus of ourselves before people look at us. So we're not willing to fight our fight. And uh, so we just stay away. You see, resigning from a job, for instance, or, or, or just leaving a church is a... Uh, is a, is a we, we think it's a way of punishing others. Somebody comes and says, Oh, why have you left? Oh, because... That's what they do. But never look at themselves to say, what is my issue? So we, we turn to wrong things to fill our emotional brokenness. And we, we start filling the gaps with alcohol or drugs or sex or pornography or gossip or stuff like that. So all taking the focus. I'm filling myself up. So our character 
becomes weak and the fight within us diminishes. We will fight others but not our own giants. So we look for we, those weaknesses we have and are, are there and the excuses why we, why we can't grow, why we can't press in, why we can't achieve. In the end we start losing hope in ourselves, in others, in the church, in God. So we so we rather highlight other people's weaknesses. I know we sometimes want to, to blame our weaknesses on our, on our own circumstances. God knows our circumstances. He knows all about our weaknesses. And, uh, and he's, he's there to help us in that every situation. And he wants us to, to extend our borders. He wants us to grow in the fullness of life that he intended for us but we do not because we don't ask him Lord help me it's a good question Lord help me Bill what's that guy's name again that, that said help me show me my that preacher Anyway, I'll, I'll get his name. You, you, you all know him. Uh, Francis Chan. Francis Chan, he said, I was at a conference with him uh, a while back. He said, Lord, show me where I am deceived. And he says, the Lord's been showing him where he's deceived. Now, that's the type of question we can ask God. Lord, show me. You know, what I'm talking about here is maybe strong words, but it's actually the truth that if we want to have growth, it just doesn't come because I want to grow my way. No, no. God created us to grow His way. He knows exactly how we tick. You know, and accepting Jesus into my, my own life at the age of 40 just changed my life just so, so much. For the first time, I found a group of people that were there to help you to grow and teach you about the gospel, to teach you about life. I never, we never had this in the, and I was a MD of a company. I mean, that's what God did. That's another story. But, but the world doesn't tell you this. And I was to go to the gym, press ups, bicycle, yeah, there, up here, everywhere. For the cyclists, I know, yeah. They, they love sucking. <laughs> but for the first time, I found a safe place to grow. And you see, we, we're going to make the, the church, you and I, a safe place. But if we are still sickling with these shells and getting, trying to get rid of shells and things like this, we, we're, not, we're still not safe. But we, we are, as long as we are trying to better ourselves, you don't have to get rid of all the shells in, in one go. Because it's a process through our lives. But we make ourselves available and we grow as we do that. Beryl was my greatest critic. She would quickly tell me where my weak spots are. And she would say, you don't like feedback, do you? (laughs) No, not that feedback. Actually, I don't mind it. But it's the way you say it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's a, uh, growing with God is just an, an amazing process. You see, getting equipped in church is so different from getting equipped in the world. <laughs> it's just, it's miles apart. You know, getting equipped in the church, you, you learn about, and this is my experience, I'm just writing down what my experience, I learned about who Jesus really was, what he did for me, his love and interest in me. He wants me to be healed. He wants to be restored. Uh, he's got a purpose for me. A purpose for me. I never knew there was a purpose for me. He knew all about my obstacles, my fears, my sense of rejection, my unworthiness, my sense of failure, the, the enemy tactics over me. 
I also learned uh, how God created me. He knows exactly how I tick, which is probably a little bit different to the way you tick, but we are ticking along <laughs> for His purpose. Uh, and, but I also learned I am one of a kind, and you are one of a kind. We are just so wonderfully made. But the devil comes along and he gets us hurt here and he gets us upset there and he gets us, takes us off focus here and, and he, starts, he starts that really right in the womb and as we grow up. I learned, I learned how Jesus died for me, how I could ask for forgiveness that, God's, that God has a plan for my life. For my life. I didn't hear that at school. I didn't hear that Growing up, for my life, it took me perhaps years to get that one. And I can understand why Caleb took such a long time, because the, he was such a great guy, but he, he couldn't process. I, well, I'm not speaking for him. I couldn't process the stuff that God has for me. I learned how, uh, uh, the, that I had potential just like everybody else here has got potential but we all say or many of us are saying me with potential come on so it takes us longer to get into that place where we step out, out of the boat and we practice our potential it just takes time because why because we don't believe in God we don't trust him and we don't believe in ourselves what, what you're all doing right now, probably, is not God's end for you. There's potential for more. Step out into God's potential for your life. How do, we over, how do I overcome these, these, these challenges? Uh, how do I shut the door in the enemy's face? And say to him, get behind me, Satan. I found out that through Jesus Christ, I have freedom. You have freedom. But you see, it's not a freedom of saying, enemy, Satan, get out. That's, that's one part of it. The other part of it is, I needed to be free inside here. Those hurts and those pains, that, that healing from the inside that I can project who I really am on the outside. I needed healing on the inside. I learned how to get rid of those obstacles and those blockages to my growth. And I'm still learning. Jesus was and still is today the answer for each one of us. He's the answer to the world, but the world is not listening. So he knew that was going to happen. So the, the world is rolling on and the end times are coming, but they are so oblivious to it. We, they, don't, they are oblivious that one day they're going to stand before the Lord. Hey, you, drunky, you got lots of money. Hey, you, woman beater, you've got, you got millions in the bank. What have you done with your life and those millions? I gave it to you. I gave you the ability to, to, um, to create wealth. You kept it for yourself. You see, what God's done through us, He saw my potential, He helped me work to my potential, but I tell you what, I had to get out the boat so many times and that water was very watery. To step out into that didn't look inviting. But when you, when you draw near to me, I will draw near to you, God says. So draw near to God. And I trusted him. But every time I got out, he was there. It was tough. But in the end, it was beautiful. <laughs> you know what? 
We all feel like that. And we haven't, we haven't got there yet. But we are all a work in progress. Step out to progress. Trust God to progress. Forgive to progress. If you see somebody struggling, walk next to him. Can I help you? I'm up here. You're still on that step over there. I've been there. Come. But no, no, no. We want to stand on the stage here by myself, ourselves. Let me say, hey, I'm here. What about you? Who can point fingers? Nobody. And I'm still not pointing fingers. I just want to encourage you that we've tried to, we've climbed these steps one by one, year by year. <laughs> My time is getting short. Lord, I need you. Don't give up. Fight the devil together with your wife, with each other. Help others reach their potential in Christ. We all have value. We all have a pearl inside of us. That's my wife's favorite. We all have a pearl inside of us. We are waiting for somebody to come and polish for us. And I need to see the pearl in your life. I need to see where, where the faults are. I say, come and give me those little things we can do, a little adjustment, a tweaking, and polish that pearl. And you've got lots of little pearls there that we need polishing. Come alongside and polish somebody else's pearl and you see how God polishes your pearl. <laughs> like it. Stick it out. Hang in there. Don't give up. He's on our side. Now my time is going. Come on. <laughs> You'll have to edit it out. <coughs> We have to deal with and overcome some of the obstacles. Just let me just deal with a couple here. Some obstacles, obstacles we put there ourselves through our own sin. We have to deal with that. Because if we don't deal with it on earth, God's going to deal with it in heaven. And I don't want them to deal with that in heaven. I'll, I'll do it a year rather. Because if I have to go to heaven, he'll say, well, now are you a goat or a sheep? You know, which way are you going? <laughs> I, I, I want to be a sheep. I want to be nicely shorn. You know, take all the, the dirty wool off and stuff. <laughs> I know it's worth a lot of money, but money's not going to go to heaven. Some of our, our blockages, others put there by their abuse of us. Some were abused as children. Some were really unfairly abused. Some parents uh, knew how to fight because they were also broken and they also went through the, the issues of life and they thought that's how you deal with your children. Beat them. Abuse them. Some of the, 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 uh, the obstacles we have is not our fault. Like what happened in the generational line. The sins of the fathers have been handed down to the children to the third and fourth generation. We've got to deal with that. I seem to be doing the things my father did. And I didn't like it, but I couldn't stop it until I was dealt with. Then I could stop it. Some came through trauma of life. We need to deal with the trauma. Sometimes we need deliverance. Most times we need healing inside. Sometimes we need both. And God wants to help us to deal with every situation. But are we willing really to, to trust him with this, this pain and the fears and the betrayals our shame, our unforgiveness. You see, when we deal with stuff, he opens the door to our potential. And we can go walk into these, this door of potential 
which God has got for us before, long before we were born or even before the earth was, was made. He, he, he knew us. We start growing into a disciple of Jesus. And the extent, and, to, and then to extend our borders. And with God's help, we can extend our borders. And we can go out into the world and we can minister. And a lot of people minister outside there without, their, without that healing. And so they go in and there and they, they still hurt. They will only do a little bit, but they won't stand up and preach or they won't give a word. And say, oh no, I'll go and build something or whatever. You see, God wants to bring healing in that inside because we don't feel good enough to do these things. We call ourselves, at our ministries, we call ourselves wounded healers. We've all been wounded. And we understand, in our team, we understand the stuff that we've gone through. And we help through the life of bringing healing into our, into our team. Because they also need to bring healing into other people's team. And that's the role of the, of the church. It's a lifetime of working through things in life, growing in him, expanding our borders of influence. Growing is not only expanding our, our, our borders, we can also grow in depth. Our, our relationship with God is so important, and that's the depth of our understanding of who, we, who God is and, and, uh, and who I am. The Lord gave me a word once, a couple of years back, and he said to me, the closer I get to him, the, the, the more I know him, the more I will know myself. That was really helpful for me. Because as I get to know God's character, I can understand, see where my character is not in standard with God's character. And, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge walk to go that way. But in the process, we, we honor him and we give him glory for, for the good and the bad and the ugly. And Lord, help us with the good. Help us to improve here. And my weak spots will help me to pick me up there. We want to say, to, with God's help, I am, I am pushing through every border, every blockage that there is in my life. And in the process of, of, this, of this growing, we learn just so much. I want to say, I have triumphed in this area and this area and this area. And I know I've got to work in this area and this area. I'm not the same person I was two years ago. Uh, hopefully I'm not the same person I was yesterday. And always give thanks. Always give thanks. Give thanks in everything. Because when we recognize we are your own weaknesses, we can start working on that weakness. And I tell you what, it takes courage sometimes to work on that weakness. Bill says, I must be nice to her. But I am nice to you. <laughs> no. You see, if I say it like that, I'm not nice to her. But if she pushes me, pushes me, I said, be nice to me. I said, but... Yeah, I can see this. I love you so much. Ah, you're putting on. <laughs> no, I'm not putting on. But you see, I've got to learn to say these things nicely and genuinely, not just because he's asking me now. And so, God has built in my character something that I know is gets, gets getting better and better. I'm, I'm not the same person I was a year ago. And uh, I know God wants to do something. But this growing process. Now, Paul said something about this in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 3. He says, uh, he says, We also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. He went through the same stuff. He knew what it was to, to be immature. I mean, 
from being a murderer and a, and, a, and, a, and a persecutor of Christians and putting him in jail. I mean, he had huge stuff to work through. We haven't been that road that he's been down. He, he wasn't afraid of the gospel as we sang this morning. He was he taught here and then they wanted to kill him and he had to go to another, another village. Uh, and he did the same thing again with the, with the same potential of being damaged and, and killed. We want to get to that place and that point where we hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. I have pushed through I've removed most of these shells. I've come closer to you. I'm more effective. And to be an effective disciple, we need to be able to walk and speak and live like Jesus lived. Because when Jesus said, follow me, that, me, that follow that, that he used there is do what I have been doing. And as a church, we have to ask ourselves, are we actually doing what Jesus Thank you. Um, we have to ask ourselves, am, am I equipped enough to be able to? Because God wants us to be equipped. And, and so the, the, the church and most churches have programs where, where we can be equipped. Many churches don't have programs where we can be equipped. Many churches don't even talk about being born again. So how can you be equipped? But praise God, we're in this church here that, that equips, and, uh, and we, it's up to us then to be equipped. But listen to a man, uh, an honorable man, his prayer, the prayer of Jabez. And 1 Chronicles 4, from verse 9 and 10, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Now that's how people saw it. Because he's talk, talking about Jabez. And then Jabez has five responses. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me. Number one. Now, yeah, he's Jabez. He's hurt. He's been cursed by this name. And the next question, let's go back. He cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Now, where does territory come into that healing process? Because it is a blessing. God wants to bless your territory of, of influence or maybe it's even property, I don't know, but, but increase my territory, whatever that meant. I don't think it was necessarily ground or whatever. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Which pain? Shame. I don't think it was a, a medical thing. It was pain that his mother gave him, that his mother cursed him. It's painful when we are rejected by our parent. And he worked, he probably was there for a few years until he said, he asked God, now, you know, let's ask God, this is my pain, this is my obstacle, Lord, help me to get rid of my pain, to go through and break these, these lobster shells. <laughs> my, help me break through my own pride and fear of dealing with the stuff. And here's the key. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was humble. 
We need to get to a place where humility is needed to deal with some, some of the stuff. Striving for holiness. Not allowing the enemy in. His mother uh, had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. That was his circumstance. We all have our own circumstances. He said, that's my circumstance. A, a name that, was, that, that cursed him. You hurt me when you were born, so I'm going to curse you. Now, maybe our parents don't say that. But the way they treat us sometimes. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a anger and a resentment towards Jabez. And we have these angers and resentments that towards us. Perhaps we were born out of wedlock. God loves you. Because his promise is when, when man and woman come together, they will multiply. So, but he wants it done in marriage. If it's not done in marriage, we just break that curse that's over us and go forward. God's there to help us to become free. His circumstance, Jehovah's circumstance, was not his fault. But the curse of the name kept him in bondage. Actually, kept him humble as well, which was a good thing. Yet, he worked on remaining honorable by forgiving cutting off the, all those curses. Work on your dad issues or your mom issues or your teacher issues or whatever issues. Work on them. Forgive them. Let's deal with the stuff. Let's break the curses that have been spoken over us. Let's ask God to expand our personal borders. It's a good, it's a good request from your side and my side. Be it personal borders, be it business borders, be it prosperity borders, oh, not prosperity, property borders. <laughs> it's, it's things that will, that will increase our influence on ministering to others. Giving honor uh, to the Lord for everything he does. God, I cannot do it without you. I cannot. Thank you for giving me the ability and the potential to do this or that. Thank you. Don't take it for granted. I'm better than you. I can play an instrument and you can't play an instrument. The guys can play instruments, suffered learning guitar, piano. It took hours and hours and hours to learn to do these things. They took the time to better themselves in these things. Sometimes we don't want to invest in ourselves to do this course or that course. Because we don't want to tell people that I don't know the stuff or I would like to get better. No. Let's submit ourselves to some of these courses. There's some brilliant stuff there that sometimes God speaks to us through these things. God, I cannot do it alone. And verse 10 in that Jabez prayer, and God granted his request. I want to grow, Lord. I, have to, I cannot use you as you are, but now I'm granting your request because you have worked on this stuff. You have <laughs> humbled yourself. You have asked for forgiveness. We, I have forgiven where I didn't really want to forgive. Am I now ready to, to take on that next step and look at the, the territory out there that Moses promised and, and to go and fight those giants? I can fight another giant now. God us. Let's ask God, what do you want to do in me? What do you want to do with me with, the, with what I've got and where I can better myself. I recognize 
like that lobster, I've got a hard shell. I need to get rid of it. Lord, help me get rid of that shell. That's stopping me, my own pride, from serving you better. What does God, what desire has God put in your heart? Have you, have you recognized what that is? The enemy also puts stuff, because the heart is wicked, but what is God's putting in your heart? I submit myself to that process of drawing closer to God. I'd like to I'd like you to stand, and I'd just like to say a prayer with you. That's, that's a prayer of sort of, Lord, help me to grow, starting right here right now. And you know the prayer that I want to pray is the Lord's Prayer. Can we say it together? The Lord's Prayer? English, Afrikaans, Marki, Sakni. Okay. Let's, let's go before the Lord say, Lord, this is what you taught your disciples. I want to be a disciple. Teach me every word that you meant in that prayer.